Hey, what's going on guys? It's ETA Prime back here again. Today I'm going to show you how to use your Android tablet or your Android phone as a screen for your Raspberry Pi. I'm going to be testing out a Raspberry Pi 4 and a Raspberry Pi 400, but basically this will work with any HDMI enabled device, be it a Nintendo Switch, an Xbox, a mini PC, or anything that outputs video over HDMI. But it just happens to be that we do a lot of Raspberry Pi stuff on the channel. And this recently popped up in my Reddit feed and I thought it was absolutely amazing. I wish I would have thought of it. Now all credit for this idea goes to the original Redditor. I can't pronounce the name, but I will leave a link to the original Reddit post in the description so you can go ahead and check it out. Now usually when we use a secondary device like an Android phone, an iPad, or even an Android tablet as a display for the Raspberry Pi, we do it wirelessly using VNC, but it can be very laggy. But this method here actually uses a wired connection and it alleviates, I'd say, 98% of the lag. There's still a tiny bit there, but it's definitely not as bad as using VNC or a wireless connection. But if you're on the go, I think that this is an awesome option for getting a display out from your Raspberry Pi or other devices to an Android device. So let's go ahead and get right into it. First thing you're going to need, obviously, is an Android tablet or an Android phone. You'll also need a Raspberry Pi. This will work with any model of the Raspberry Pi as long as it has HDMI out. Like I mentioned, I'm going to be testing out the Raspberry Pi 4 and the Pi 400 in this video. Now, in order to send video out of HDMI from the Pi to the tablet, you're going to need a little capture device. I actually picked this one up on Amazon for $8, so it's $7.99. This is a USB capture device. It's USB 2.0 on one side, HDMI on the other. I have not tested out a USB 3.0 version, but this one seems to work fine. And it was the cheapest one that I came across, so I figured I'd go ahead and test it out. And it does work quite well. So basically, what's going to happen here is we're going to put HDMI out from the Raspberry Pi into the USB capture device, and in turn, it's going to send that signal over USB to our tablet. Now, since this has USB type A on one side, it's not going to plug directly into the tablet or phone. So I would recommend getting something like this. Now, this is female USB on one side, USB type C on the other. And this is kind of a makeshift cable here, but I'm going to leave a link to a real one that you can pick up. Now, I originally wanted to go with a little smaller design, but I didn't like the fact that the capture device was really hanging off the side. So I just got kind of a little extension here. USB Type-C on one end, female USB on the other. So I'm going to show you how this works from the Raspberry Pi 4 to my phone, and then we'll swap over to the Raspberry Pi 400 and the bigger screen tablet. Now on your Android device, you will have to download one application. It's free to download from the Google Play Store. There's actually several that you can download. The first one recommended is called USB Camera Standard. And the second one is USB Camera Connect Easy Cap. This is actually the one I started with, so I'm going to stick with this one in the video. But I'm sure there's more available on the Google Play Store, so you can kind of pick and choose and experiment to see which one works better for your use case scenario. All right, so let's go ahead and get this connected. I got my Raspberry Pi 4 here. It's actually running an SD card with Ubuntu installed. I have my power supply. Here's my HDMI. We're going to go ahead and plug this into the Pi. So just go to one of the micro HDMI ports on the Pi. We're going to take the other end and plug it right into that USB capture card. Now make sure you have the app you've chosen installed on your Android device. And we'll just plug this directly into the phone. On the initial plug-in, it might prompt you to allow access to that USB capture card. And since my app's already installed, it auto-launched. But we'll go ahead and start it up. So we're ready to power up the Pi. And this will work when the Pi's already powered up. I'm just going to go ahead and plug in power here. Give it a little time to boot up. But just to show you that we are getting video out, we have our Pi Boot screen. It's going to give us the rainbow logo, and it's going to boot right into Ubuntu. It's going to take a few seconds for this Pi to boot up, so while that's going, I'll go ahead and plug in my USB mouse, just so I can control the Raspberry Pi on the screen. Because when it's hooked up this way, we're not going to be able to access the touch screen on our Android device to control the Raspberry Pi. You will still need a keyboard and mouse hooked up to control the operating system on your Pi. I kind of wish that it would work, but the way it's hooked up right now, we're just basically sending HDMI video into the phone over that USB capture card. And just to give you a look here, I'll pull that HDMI cable over. We're just plugged right in from the Pi to that USB adapter right into the phone. And once everything's booted up, we'll be able to use our Android device as a display for a Raspberry Pi 4. And this is hot swappable, so if your Raspberry Pi was already running, you can just go ahead and plug it right in. 
And if you don't allow access all the time, it'll always prompt you to allow access to that USB device. I just choose allow all the time. So every time I plug it in, it'll come right up. And with the app I'm using here, EasyCap, as long as it's running in the background, as soon as I plug any kind of HDMI signal into the phone or tablet, it'll bring it right up on screen. Now, personally, with the desktop operating system like I'm running on the Pi now, I think a phone is a bit too small, so I definitely would recommend using something a little bigger. Even the new Amazon Fire HD 8 and the HD 8 Plus will work with this. They're pretty cheap on Amazon, and they have a USB Type-C interface. And that way, you don't have to work with a small screen like this. You can get an 8-inch screen, or you could even go with the Amazon Fire HD 10, which has that 10-inch screen on it. Looks pretty good when it's connected. All right, so moving over to the Raspberry Pi 400 and the bigger screen. I have power into the Raspberry Pi 400. I got my HDMI plugged in. It's actually all booted up and ready to go. I'm just gonna plug this directly into the USB Type-C port on the tablet itself. I'll start the app that I chose to use, and there we have it. And now I can use my tablet as a monitor for my Raspberry Pi 4 when I'm on the go. And it does support sound, so I'm going to go over here to a YouTube video, and I'll show you that sound is working through the tablet speaker over HDMI. So it's not just a video signal. We also have audio over HDMI to this Android device. So yeah, it actually works pretty good. It's a really awesome option if you're on the go. You can throw your Pi 400 in your backpack and your tablet, and if you need to use the Pi 400 for anything at all, you can just plug it right in, and you'll have this battery power display. All right, so with the app that I'm using, there's a couple settings I like to change here, because when you initially plug this in, you're going to be at a lower resolution, and it's not going to fill the screen. So basically, from the main menu or from the main screen here, we're just going to head over to Settings size and change it to 1920 by 1080. Otherwise, straight out of the box, it'll look something like this. And at 1080, it's just going to fill that screen up and it just looks really good. So yeah, that's going to wrap it up for this video. I think this is a cool little option here. You can always carry one of those little USB capture devices in your bag with you and get this up and running in no time. If you're interested in picking up one of these capture devices and cable, I will leave some links in the description. If you have any questions, let me know in the comments below. And like always, Thanks for watching.